Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Math. Today we've been taking a look at uh, basic anti-differentiation, calculating integrals, and uh, we also took a look at uh, integration by substitution for uh, functions that aren't so simple to work with. Uh, again, another method of integration for uh, functions that aren't so easy to work with is integration by parts. So as we mentioned in the integration by substitution video, a uh, common misconception is that the integral of f of x times g of x dx is equal to this, f of x dx times g of x dx. That is not true. Another common misconception is that the integral of f of x over gx dx is the integral of f of x dx over g of x dx. Again, not true. So a uh, way to work with uh, functions, and this is the uh, complex looking version, excuse me, of integration by parts. We have the integral of a function times the uh, derivative of another function, dx, plus the integral of that first function's derivative times the second function, dx, equals the two functions multiplied by each other plus a constant. So this is a little bit easier to see when we set the functions equal to u and v and say uv, uh, u dv and v du. So we have for this u dv plus v du is going to equal uv plus c or when we set bounds and uh, do a little subtraction this is actually what this is going to look like. Most often the um, the integral that we're looking to manipulate is going to become u dv so basically what we do is when we're given uh, an integral such as this one we decide to set one part of it or the other equal to uh, u or dv and then the other function equal to dv so whatever part equals dv is going to have the dx in it uh, whatever part has du is just going to be u and then we have u dv evaluated from a to b is going to equal u v evaluated from a to b minus v du evaluated from a to b. So this is going to be easiest to see when we're actually looking with looking at a function, um, but this is actually a little bit more difficult to work with um, and say integration by substitution. But we're going to go ahead and immediately take a look at this example up here. So the best choice up here would be to set dv equal to e to the x dx because we know that the uh, derivative of e to the x is just uh, e to the x dx. So dv equals e to the x dx and we have v equals e to the x. Now what we need to do to get the other side of the integration by parts formula is to uh, differentiate u and to take the antiderivative of dv and as I mentioned before v equals e to the x. So now we have our u dv and we just need to set up the other side of the equation. So u times v is just going to be x e, e to the x. And then we're going to have an integral v du, which is e to the x dx. And as we uh, looked at before, this is just simply e to the x. Again, the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, since we don't have bounds of integration for this, uh, we're going to have a plus c um, added on to the end. So now let's take a look at a function. Uh, we don't know how to um, take the antiderivative of the natural log of x. Um, and there's not two functions there for us to look at. But what we could do is instead of you know, having two different uh, functions, x, for example, x and e to the x, that we're going to look at, we can simply call dv dx and let u equal ln x. Now differentiate u, 
du equals 1 over x dx. And take the antiderivative of dv time or dv equals 1 dx. Well, 1 dx, the antiderivative of that is just x, so we have v equals x. So now we can set up the right side, uv minus the integral of uh, v du. u times v is x ln x. And v du is x times 1 over x dx. x and 1 over x cancel, and that's just x ln x minus 1 dx. And we have the integral of ln x dx is x ln x minus x plus c. So now that we've taken a look at um, some functions without uh, bounds of integration and added on constants, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a, a definite integral. So the integral we have, the integral we have is from 0 to pi over 4, and it's 4 minus 3x times the sine of x dx. Now we're going to go ahead and um, decide which to set equal to u and which to set equal to dv. Now it would make sense that uh, sine of x dx is easy to um, take the antiderivative of. It's just going to be negative cosine of x because uh, the derivative of cosine of x is negative sine of x and negative cosine of x is negative times negative sine of x which is just sine of x. which leaves our u to be 4 minus 3x. We're going to take the antiderivative of dv and the derivative of u. And du equals negative 3 dx. So now that we have our v and our u, and our limits of integration have already been set up. We can go ahead and do the multiplication and then uh, do that, evaluate for our limits. So uv is 4 minus 3x times negative cosine of x, which is negative So we have the negative cosine of x times 4 minus 3x uh, evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 4. And now normally we subtract uh, v du, but since v is negative, we're going to go ahead and add it and get rid of this uh, subtraction sign, this uh, negative sign, excuse me, on the inside of our integral. And we have du is negative 3x dx, so, or excuse me, uh, du is negative 3 dx. There's no x in there because this just yields a constant when we take the derivative. So it looks like uh, we're going to actually have to end up subtracting this integral anyways. Uh, let's take the... Uh, antiderivative of cosine of x, which is just sine of x, because the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. Here I pulled the negative 3 out to the front and then just took the integral of cosine of x dx, which is 
negative 3 times sine of x. And that needs to be evaluated for our limits as well. All right, so this isn't necessarily going to be uh, easy um, evaluation because we're going to have some radicals in here. Um, but bear with me as we go through and calculate this all out. So we have uh, negative times 4 minus 3 times pi over 4, which is 4 minus 3 pi over 4. times the cosine of pi over 4, which is two, uh, rad 2 over 2. And then we're going to go ahead from this. It's just like um, dealing with this over here. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and subtract off uh, whatever this function evaluated at 0 is. Um, when we subtract that, we're subtracting a negative. So we're going to go ahead and say that we're just adding. 4 minus 3 times 0 is 4, and the cosine of 0 is 1. And now we need to take care of the negative 3 sine of x. So we have minus, and we're going to go ahead and evaluate 3, uh, or excuse me, yep, evaluate 3 sine of x from pi over 4 to 0. We have 3 times sine of pi over 4 is 3 rad 2 over 2. And the sine of 0 is just 0, so we're just going to subtract 3 rad 2 over 2. And all we need to do is go ahead and evaluate this, and we get our final answer, which is going to turn out to be... Now you could simplify this a little further, uh, but it's 4 minus 2 square root of 2 plus 3 pi square root of 2 over 2 minus 3 rad 2 over 2. So again, uh, using integration by parts, um, this is a very uh, simple version of using integration by parts. Um, for more information on uh, how to use integration by parts, um, more complex integrals or integrals, uh, improper integrals, uh, please check out our Integral Calculus book by David Massey, uh, which will also um, lead into uh, other great parts of our calculus series, um, where you'll be able to find even more uh, extended information on uh, calculus concepts. Thank you for watching. For more math videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here, or for additional resources, including affordable digital textbooks, please visit centerofmath.org.